All right, we got Lewis and Patrick. They're coming out from Adair Designs. They have a YouTube channel and they make rings. They make projects that are made from meteors and made from fossils and they turn these mediums into functional art. You can actually wear their art, it's awesome. But I wanna create a casting mold to create rings. So I need a cylindrical object. I'm using PVC. This is one inch PVC pipe and we're gonna create a mold so we can fill that mold with epoxy and anything. And what does that do? It gives us the opportunity to put this on a mini lathe and turn it into a ring. They're coming out, we're gonna check out what they can do and they're gonna teach me how to create a ring. But I gotta get prepared and make a blank. Let's get started. Remember, when you subscribe to our channel, click on the red subscribe button and be sure to ring the bell so you get notified every time we have a new video. Thanks again. Hold it down for about 10 seconds and it'll be really solid. Now we have a cap that you can't see through and it's really a good transition. There we go. Now my, uh, my rod won't roll. That'll keep it locked in place. That keep, it still holds it up off the bottom. Now let's just tappy tap. We're gonna tint our stone coat countertop epoxy using dye. This dye is made from alumalite. It's a blue dye and it's translucent so we could see through it into the different highs and lows and the peaks and valleys of this wood. What's up YouTube? I'm with Patrick Adair Designs. Yes. We are about to make some crazy rings. What did we do, man? We just mixed all sorts of pigments, epoxies, and we just try to make some cool looking wood. We messed it up with the bandsaw, try to get some cool jagged patterns. I'm excited to see how these turn out. That's wild, man. I like that. Yeah, we could cut this in half and use it for two. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Why don't we cut it like the width of that pipe so we know, and then I'll just round it yeah. to that. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So we can talk about like the pros of like, here's why you might want to make a mold. The reason that I made this mold is so that 
when you're using resin on a small scale. See, I'm making molds when I have excess of doing a giant countertop, yeah, but if yeah. you're not mixing a lot of material, you don't want to have a lot of waste, right? Yeah. So that's why this mold works. But because we can mix a big batch, we're going to make some ring molds and cups too. Yeah, yeah. So the strategy, we've got this big piece. That's going to waste a ton of resin that we need to fill in the whole excess here. But this one, you just slide it in, and that's going to be like pennies worth of resin on <laughs> Right, exactly. Right there. So this yes. will be super efficient, and then these will give us a good, just like a quick prototype version. All right, so next step, you want to do... Super glue? Yeah, let's do some CA, get some glow powder in here. Heck yeah, let's man. I would not have thought of that. I'm, I'm I could. See it. So if we keep it translucent in there, you're going to see in yeah, there. Yeah, you'll see into it. Whoa, so let's like do it. There. So I'm thinking, let's try to kind of like powder that in there, get it stuck in all those grooves that we put on the bandsaw. And then just kind of glue it in place. Let's just dump in it. I go bit. through a lot of this stuff. Okay. I, I usually roll with Ultra Thin. You do? I've never used Ultra Thin, man. It's because it just, you know, I put the glow powder in place and then you add the glue and it just oh, soaks into it. I see. I see. So it can even like stabilize your wood. Sure. Yeah. This is such a good idea, man. Yeah, I've never tried it like this and uh, gotta say, doing stuff in a pinch really helps innovate. If we pour a little bit of clear. Nice. Sure. If that does anything. Resin time, I think just like a, just like this. Fairly translucent blue. Cool, man. Like that. Well, that think? was done with our drops, not with metallic powder. You okay. want to do that? Or do you want to just add a tiny bit let's of blue? Keep it to, let's keep it with powders for okay. now. Let's keep it simple. We'll just do a tiny bit like that deep yeah. and that'll tell us how translucent cool. it is. This, what's nice about this is in a ring, you know, this, you can obviously tell this pattern was kind of man-made on the bandsaw. Mm -hmm. But once we cut this into a ring, you're never going to tell. You're going to be so zoomed in that you're not going to notice the, right. the consistency to the pattern. So oh, right, right. once this turns and out. And you'll get a lot of rings out of something. Oh that yeah, way. that's a, uh, maybe even 10 rings, depending on how we use it, so. Golly. What, uh, what color are we doing with this one, Patrick? Just the blue? Let's do blue, yeah, and let's just do a teeny bit. Like like this color blue? I think so. Okay. Think that looks great. And just a tiny bit. Swirling going on in there. So I just either get a plastic spoon or a popsicle stick, and just little bits, like way less than you mm -hmm. think you'll need, and then just using that method, you could keep it translucent. Okay. All right, we're just gonna mix up some epoxy. Have you guys seen what Patrick makes? It is outstanding. If you haven't, go check out Patrick Adair Design on YouTube. It is wild. So, so all I'm doing is really dipping the stick in the metallic and I'm just adding, I dip that one in. Let's Tiniest just, bit. I like those bubbles in there. Can we, little, can we keep those? Um, actually, a lot of those are gonna That's float gonna to the surface. Out. That's okay. Yeah, it'll float to the surface. Because it's a slow dry, it gives it a mm. chance to float out. Okay. If it dried I've fast, always, it would. I've never done it, but I've always wondered about leaving bubbles in a piece on purpose. I'm always so obsessed with getting rid of them. Right. Yeah, I think it would be cool to leave them, but I don't know how much it'll be. Like, this other one has a few in it that we have, so we'll see how that turns. So you, we're kind of going for that color yeah. there, so. You see, I'm just adding a little bit at a time. Yeah. I could add a little bit more. I'm being a little too conservative. What if we mixed a little in one of these and then we poured it with, as the epoxy, we pour like a tenth of the total volume into there. Mm -hmm. And that can like yeah, precisely. Here, grab some gloves we're, and you do it. There. But I'm just, I, I, I want to kind of try this out. Yeah, buddy, you, you, you go. So see this, I made this pretty, uh, opaque right but now if i just take a little bit you can just kind of like oh heck yeah spoon it in that's smart man when i want to mix white into a resin that's how i do it because one drop of white can completely just oh yeah overpower so with what you're doing you're micro color so you don't want to use too much what colors do you want me to start on these patrick let's do some of those the deep space palette so the, do you want to do a black, dark purple, and the, the same blue? Yes, sir. I'll be on that right now. And then f I typically just overload it with pigment, so. Okay. Then, then this will be easy. Yeah. You have the hard job. Yeah, okay. This is looking really good. I have to oh, like that's that. pretty. That's See, you're starting blue. to get the shimmer now. Yeah. I like that. Here. <laughs> 
Okay. So you could just let it be because we could situate it in a little yeah. bit. And yeah, man, yeah, that's going to be good. That's pretty. That's a pretty yeah, color. Just man. the right amount of blue. I agree. We got the shimmer. I like the shimmer a lot better than just the boring. I, I agree. Look at that. And that's about as thin as a ring. Yeah, I think so. So like you can definitely tell that that's got some color to it, but we're going to still be able to see into all the cool details of the wood and the glow powder. True. So you got black there. I'm going to put violet pearl in one and then we'll leave one clear as a miscellaneous in case you want to add yeah, something. So what did you think of the summit? That was just amazing. I was blown away. There's like such an awesome community there of like devoted people. And it's like you people gathered from all around the world to be here today. I don't know. You, you just don't get to see that on YouTube where it's just kind of like you've got the people there watching the videos, but you don't get to connect. Well, I think it'd be easier, easiest to center it. So what if we Just cut that? Cut that a little bit. Well, yeah, you want to go kind of cut it where you think it yeah. should be cut. Got it. Cool. I'm not sure how much these are gonna mix, but if they mix a lot, it's gonna look great. If they don't, it's also going to look great. So, what we could do is that'll help mix them. Is just get in there with a stick and oh, just yeah. barely move yeah. it around, and, and that should help us. There we go. That's going to look cool. Do you want to leave it be, or do you want to swirl it? How about I take a plunge perpendicular to it like this? I like that. It just kind of makes ensures that we got, and maybe there'll be like a, a seam. Yeah. Where they all kind of converge. It could be. We'll see. Money. Nice. Your black metallic? Yeah, buddy. Let's put it in there. Money. You do it. Well, you got gonna this. Gonna give you the honors. No, this is a team effort. Is that good? I think that's plenty. Oh, that's a lot. Yeah. That would do like like a half gallon of okay. epoxy. Okay. So it's gonna be potent. Good. But you can't put too much. That's the nice thing is some um, additives, if you put too much, it can make your epoxy gummy. Yeah. That's not the case with metallic powder. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. I say we both pour this at the same time. Ooh, yeah, a little tag team. A little dual pour. Oh, I'm dumping in your cup now. <laughs> oh, I love it. That is looking so cool. The second it touches the black, the color just like pops. Yes, that was a cool idea. <laughs> That's cool. The benefit of doing a clear container. Yeah. I'll tell you what, Patrick, that, um, oh, wow. it's that's a better. neat, that's a neat look. Sometimes it's cool just to throw a little bit of clear in too. Oh, to give it a little. Yeah, yeah. it does weird, cool stuff, man. Yeah. Artisan Summit 2020, Patrick and Lewis from Adair Designs will be there and they'll teach you something that you never knew. What do you think of these, man? These look great. This one really kind of the colors really blended nicely got a lot of, I don't know, like pearlescence to it. Yeah, you know. I, I don't know how to get this out. I'll tell you what, so this casting that we used, it was designed for three quarters of an inch thick. Okay. So in here, it's gonna still be somewhat pliable, okay. but you could feel how hard it is because yeah, we, we went we went bigger than, than it's supposed to be, okay. but it's ready to turn. Yeah, like, that, that, that's ready. <laughs> I've got like a whole gradient to work with. We can pick our spot on. And this could even be like the oh, outside of the room. Yeah, yeah. That is wild. That looks great. I, I hope that uh, shimmer shows through well on the ring. I think it will. So what's our plan? What do you want to turn first? I don't know. This is, uh, let's, why don't we get these into cylinders so okay. we can actually like work with them. I don't I know like if it. we want to use a sander or we chuck could, them up them in the lathe. We, could, we, can, we can cut them um, oh, yeah. on the bandsaw band to closer to size. Squares kind of. Yeah, what do you think? Okay, let's go for it. All right. That's cool, man. All right, so we've got the two blanks ready to go. We're gonna cut some slices off, and then we'll be able to sand those into a circle, make some rings out of them. Once we cut a little uh, square slice off, uh -huh. we'll sand it into a, a rough circle shape, yes. chuck it up in the lathe here, then that'll allow us to spin it around. Uh -huh. Then we can just kind of grind out the in inner diameter and then we'll be able to work on the outer diameter. How do you work on the, how do you chuck up the I outer I usually diameter? bring a spanning ring mandrel, uh -huh. um, but we can use whatever we need to, whether it's making a cone shape out of wood that we just kind of like jam it on there. Why don't we try, can we try something where if we keep the, if we keep one of these long, we could chuck it up in there. Yeah, yeah. We could do the inside, outside, and then we could part it off. That's a good idea. Is, is that I don't cool? Have my mandrels with me. That's so then we don't have idea. to. 
Okay. So if we could uh, just sand this a little bit circular. Sure. And uh, just cut off this excess, I think. Where at? Oh yeah, you got it, exactly. Boom. Nice. So I'll just cut that off. And we could use that on another blank, huh? Sure, yeah. It's the best part. Isn't it satisfying? Look at that, that blank looks pretty cool, man. It does. Normally, what's your process first? Do you first cut it out the center? I usually like to trim down the outer diameter. Okay. And get it uh, just like smooth and nice and start to kind of visualize the ring. So this is that diamond, but I'm wondering how it's gonna work on the resin yeah. and the wood, but we'll find out. Got a little bit more of the bubble to work our way through, but we're still like, here's my ring. We've got a long way to go, so we should be able to get right Wow, here. wow, okay. Where do we want to get the ring from? We've got anywhere on this whole bar. Man, I don't know. I say you start with one up here. Mm -hmm. We could we could bore through it enough to make a ring, mm -hmm. turn it the way you want, and then I have a parting tool that we could cut and then just, yeah. so get your shape and all that and just leave yeah. enough meat to hang on, yeah. and then you're ready for your next ring cool. next, next time you're ready. All right, so I've got uh, CA glue on this paper towel. Oh, I'm just gonna yeah. rub it against here. Well, this will give us a nice kind of preview of what a polished piece will look like. It's also gonna help get in the wood fibers and stabilize the wood a little bit. Oh, that's cool, oh, man. Nice. That's really cool. Yeah, that gloss really helps bring out the, the color shift of those pigments. All right, accelerating time. All right, let's do it. And then we'll do one final CA. Okay. Do you want me to, do you start with like, I start with 220, but is that yeah. too aggressive? No, I, I keep it. I you want to go even a more aggressive the, than that? I usually start with 220. All right. All right, so now we've got all the standing marks. You want to go up to the next grid? Yeah, let's go to the next one. 320? 320 it is. All right. Ready for the next one? All right, let's go 400. Yep. And then I have, uh, when I'm polishing epoxy, I use discs that are designed to polish bowling balls. Ooh, cool. And so that's what I have. I'll have you try them out, see what you think. Yeah. We could put a CA finish on right now and we'd probably be ready to go. Okay. Let's do it. I've never done this with thick. It works best with thin. Okay. You can leave like a, just a super thin layer on it that's right. just like perfectly glossy. You don't even have to polish it or sand it when really? you're done. All right. Let's, uh, let's go up a few RPMs. I'm just going to okay. go one more. Now, I'm just gonna dab a little bit on this time. Last time I did a thick glob because I just kind of wanted an excess amount. Sure. That, I just want to have like a thin film over the whole thing. I see. Thin to win. Thin to win, that's, that's what they say, apparently. All right, let's see how that turned out. That is actually pretty good. I think what we need to do, let's accelerate this and let's put on another layer. And then I think we would benefit from sanding it with like 400 grit and then okay. just go all the way through all the polish. I like it. I think that's a good idea. Cool. Perfect. There we go. Just roughing up the surface. That way we don't get delamination, mm. delamination between layers. That's a ton twister. You want to wipe that? Yeah. There we go. Now, doing the exact same thing I just barely did. I'm just using the same piece, but the backside. All right, let's just keep building that up because I want to sand into it pretty aggressively. Cool. So that we can polish it without getting through it. Yeah. And that way we can get rid of all those. There's some streaks there. What you guys make is just incredible, Patrick. I, I love it, man. Thank you. All right. Let's do one more for good measure. Okay. All right now, we're just trying to build up a thick layer. Let's see, I'm gonna wipe it off first. Then hit it with a final layer. Nice. All right, so the goal here is we've already got kind of a nice finish on it, mm -hmm. but there's just some streaks because, uh, you know, polishing with a paper towel is not the, the greatest of right, techniques. Right. So we gotta get rid of all those ridges. And then we'll just sand through all the different grits, use your polishes. Okay. And we'll get this looking nice. We'll see what, we'll see what you think, man. Yeah. Well, this is the first time I've ever witnessed a ring being made. All right. Because I can't say I'm making it, 
I'm just witnessing hey, some a master at his craft. You're right just here. as involved as I was in the making of this. Try that one. Nice. It's really forgiving because of the foam on it. Yeah. Just put it wherever and it just. Yeah. That was five. Let's go. So normally I go a thousand, but let me give you this. And it, it worked on my little shot glass, so. That is nice. This is what we used to polish our countertops. Okay. And it'll do 40 square foot of countertops, so it'll probably do 4,000 4, rings. rings. <laughs> yes. You mind if I try this, Patrick? No, go for it. This is your... Don't need a lot, right? All right, here we go. Well, that's nice and solid in that lathe. You can push pretty good, huh? Yeah. Here it comes. <laughs> that's sick, man. That looks 10 times better than it did before. That's so cool. That's amazing. Yeah, no scratch marks, man. No scratches, no, not even the slightest of streaking. That's some really good polish. And we're gonna bore out the middle first. I'll just do a little bit of time, make sure the shavings are getting released. That's working. Heck yeah. Don't want it to overheat. Go quick and get out. All right, so you ready for that boring tool again? Yes. Now we'll start hollowing that out. So you have special bits for that? Yeah, we can call them like a boring bar. It's pretty much exactly what you've got ground here out of this high-speed steel though, so. Okay. This is working great. They, they do extend like up to like four inches, so you can get deep in a recess, but these are just fine for ring. All right, I'm trying to see uh, my ring in this piece and kind of figure out where I want it to be. You got some cool detail on the wood here. I kind of want to mm -hmm. highlight that. And this cool resin section here. So I'm going to cut just a little bit of this back That's so really I can pretty, get into that more interesting section. That's what you were talking about with your meteorite and stuff. You're always looking for the, the cool grain and... Yeah, exactly. Just, you know, rings are so small that you don't have such a big work piece to highlight all the different features. So you got to find something that's got a really tight pattern to it. Yeah. Woods with a really small grain figure, all of that. So it's kind of a whole different challenge when it comes to rings. I don't know if it's shown on camera, but that color shift is amazing. It looks like almost white from some angles. It's like pitch black in certain areas. But if you catch the light right, it gives you that just purple sheen. That violet pearl, baby. I love it, that's <laughs> fantastic. And you're right, the black like went to the wood. And you know what I think that is, Patrick, is the black is more dense. Okay. It's a more dense powder. So that kind of sitting up against the edge there? Yeah, I guess. That makes sense. So I'm just trimming this down to ring size. I don't ever like my wall thickness to be more than three millimeters on a ring. It's a little too chunky at that point. Okay. And we could get out the calipers and measure, but I can just do it by eye. Okay, so I've made sure that I've pushed this back further than this edge is here, because the worst thing to do is to finish it all up and then you go to part it off and it's oh, yeah. like, I don't even know what happens in that scenario, but you get a lot of like chipping. A lot of bad stuff can happen, so. That diamond keeps a good finish as it is, man. It like does. The inside, not as important finish-wise. Oh, know, right, so. okay. Uh, look good, so we might just wanna go for a CA finish straight from here. All right. And then just use a little bit of your polish after we hit it with some 400 grit, and let's just kinda test it. All right. See how far we can push it. You're just putting a little bevel on it? Yep, want it to be comfortable to wear. Nice and soft on the finger. The other side, we're not gonna be able to do that too until we part it off, so we'll have to do that after. But we'll get it as far as we can so we can save ourselves the headache of at least one of the sides. Okay, now let's put a CA finish on that. So you got, um, we cut a strip of 400 grit. You're gonna sand in between CA applications? Yeah, just, I think I'll just do one layer. Awesome. But I'll do the CA and then we'll just buff it up with a 400. I could, then we can polish. I could see that made it a lot more comfortable yeah, just knocking yeah, that edge. Okay. That edge, that's going to fit on your finger a lot better. CA. Check. Check. Okay. 
So let's see, look at the, look at the finish we've got now with just oh, wow. rubbing that. Is it dry? Yeah. I guess I should have asked before. Yeah, that's really smooth already. That's, uh, so that would be comfortable. Yeah, so, and it's not like 100% perfect, but it's comfortable and it's the inside of the ring. So. Exactly, and it's gonna wear to your finger yeah. quickly. Exactly. Um, let's go ahead and polish it, because why not? Okay. But I don't even think that's... Do you, do you need to sand it or just polish? I'm feeling this, it's pretty smooth. Okay. I'll give it just a quick second of sanding. It's awesome, man. All right, guys, we've got the ring pretty much there. We just need to part it off, and then we're gonna try to address that inside edge, make that smooth and comfortable like we did here. Now, do you care about catching it, or do you just let it fall off? I'll usually just let it fall off, but this has such a pretty finish on it, I'll get it on here. There it yeah. goes. Nice! All right, that's clean, man. Yeah, we did that nice and smooth. So this is just like a three minute hand sand, you know, just kind of smooth yes. that out and uh, just polish it up as best we can. That's beautiful, brother. It's a good way to highlight anything. You see so much of what we worked with. You got the really cool looking wood, the black metallic, as well as the violet pearl. You think that's an appropriate name for I it? I certainly do, that's beautiful. There we go, that's comfortable on both sides now. It's looking good. We're gonna put an inlay of blue. Yeah, into, into the ring. So we're gonna cut a channel with the cutoff bar. And Mike, you just threw this by me. You're like, hey, what if we did an inlay? So I think it's gonna look cool. So we're gonna cut a little channel into this and then we're gonna inlay it with the metallic uh, Crater Lake blue. So we're gonna see how that turns out. It's just kind of experimental. It might end up cracking the ring because we're kind of a little uh, we're kind of pushing it in terms of our dimensions right now. So we'll see how it goes. This will be really opaque and we'll just uh, cut that groove into it, inlay it, awesome. trim it flush, polish it back up. Sick. It should look really cool. And you shouldn't need, yeah, that's probably good. You good? Yeah. Nice. Finished my uh, loop. We might have to do another layer here. Let's turn it flush and let's see what we're working with. Sweet. See where it needs it and that way we can apply it a little more specifically. Is that hardening up too in there? Oh yeah, that's hard as okay. a rock. Okay, let's check that out. All right, we've got a few little spots that need to be addressed, but yeah, cool, that's man. That's looking great. Should we, uh, should we overfill it more? Is that what yeah, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's whip up another batch. There specifically needed it. I'm gonna try to get it down in there as best I can. This actually would make that ring a lot stronger in that area now, too. Yeah, it should. Force it. Okay, so now I've got the, uh, the bit here set at the exact same depth it was last time. I'm just gonna go through and just trim this flush. I wanted to make sure it's really had time to harden up. Yeah, but sometimes it's just skinned over on the yeah. surface. Yeah, huh? so, but it feels really solid. It's not, I, I'm not deforming it at all. That blue just glows off that it thing. Does. That's it sick, out. man. Not bad. That looks like a piece of rock in there. It does, like a turquoise inlay. Yeah. So now we need to figure out Width-wise on the ring, do we want to center that stripe? I do. I make it wide. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Finish, okay. Finish the outside, polish that up, do all the same steps we did with that one. Uh huh. We'll just kind of breeze through it, and we'll be done. I love it, man. Strips are the way to go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm just gonna get it in there, kind of round off that edge, make it look nice, then we'll put CA over the whole thing. Love it. Is it feeling good? It's feeling good. Got our paper towel. Oh yeah, and I'll cut more too. All right, let's hit it with a bit of accelerator just to make sure it's cured all the way. All right, let's part this thing off. We'll have ourselves a finished ring in just a Sweet. couple minutes. <laughs> How about that? That's cool, man. All right, let's part this off and let's uh, get it on your finger. There we go. Yeah. 
Oh, that's sick. I love it. We've got all the different colors in there. That looks good. All right, let's uh, let's address this edge here. Okay. Get that looking pretty. All right, so now we've got a little bit of color mismatch on this edge here. Mostly just sawdust. I guess it's looking better already. But I'm gonna attempt to uh, give this a CA finish by hand. All right. Not so sure how this is gonna work Should out. Should we mask it, anything off on it? No, because that's just gonna leave us with a seam. What I'm gonna All do right. is I'm gonna go really like gradual on it. Uh -huh. So I'll have not enough CA glue rather than right, too much. Right. So if it looks the way that it already does right now, it already looks okay. So we're just gonna try to get it the slightest little bit better. Almost just like a varnish. Right. There we go. So I didn't go too overboard because I, like I said, I don't want to get it everywhere. Uh huh. But I just kind of shined it up, got it to match the yes. rest of it. And that is a finished ring. But that's looking good. That is going in the podcast room right there, dude. Ooh. That's, dude, that was sick, man. So there it is guys, this was a lot of fun. I'm super happy you invited me over to do this. I love making rings, I love sharing it with the world. And I hope you guys really enjoyed the video. I enjoyed it and I have a ring that I'm gonna keep forever and my wife's gonna fight me for it and she don't get it. She don't get it. We'll make her <laughs> one later. Guys, thanks. Visit us anytime at StoneCoatCountertops.com. Call anytime for free project support. And until next time from Stone Coat Countertops, you, you got this. We'll see you on the next Patrick Adair Designs video. Pro tip. Never stop learning. Do you want to learn more? At the end of this video, Patrick Adair has created a sequel. You have a follow-up to how he made the rest of these blanks into functional art. Go check out Patrick Adair. See how these rings are turned into something even fancier than we made in this video. We'll see you there. Right here, Patrick Adair, he's created a follow-up to this video. Go check that out, and to see all the products used in this video, check out StoneCoatCountertops.com. We'll see you there.